Good morning. It's me. Sorry I didn't get to making a video yesterday. Um, we'll talk about why in a minute. So, going to do two videos today. I'm going to do one right now on post-stroke sensory overload. Um, and then I'm going to do a letter of the alphabet. I haven't figured out which one yet, but we'll get to it. So, I went to my first support group with other people yesterday. Um, almost forgot I had it, but luckily I'm a man who's had a stroke. I'm screwed. Um, yeah, genetics and a medical condition. My memory shot. So, granted, a lot of the people there were not in my age cohort. They were significantly older. Um, and, or had drastic other issues. Uh, it was, still had some advantages. Because um, I asked them, hey, did anyone happen to have a problem with fluorescent lights and noise? And one person there said, yes, they definitively had that. I'm like, oh, so it's not just me. So we're going to discuss post-stroke hypersensitivity or uh, sensory overload, post-stroke sensory overload. Now, depending on your stroke, depending on you, uh, will depend on if you have the sensory overload, right, or not. Um, and again, how it presents. So for me, uh, fluorescent lights, completely hate them, uh, and ambient transient noise around me. And also when I try to do cognitive work, brain work, um, I, my, my brain just gets completely befuddled at times. And we'll go through that. So, now, your sense of taste, touch, smell, hearing, and vision can be impacted in any combination or not, right? So, your sense of touch could be impacted. Your sense of taste could be impacted. Your sense of smell, hearing, and or vision could or could not be impacted. Uh, luckily for me, my sense of touch, a um, little bit of my right hand, um, I notice I don't feel things as well sometimes. Uh, my sense of taste and smell have been not impacted at all. Uh, just hearing and vision, right? Now, what could that look like, right? Could be sounds that you barely noticed before become alarming and startling, right? Could be sounds like there's a megaphone in your ears. Could be background noises um, uh, in overstimulating environments become overwhelming. That's what I have. Malls, shopping for food, shopping in the mall, um, ambient transient noise. Uh, the constant ambient noise in my home I can deal with because I know what it is. But when I'm out in a store, uh, and they use ballast-based lighting, I can hear the ballasts. If there's a fan just slightly off gimbal, like a ventilation fan, I can hear it. Um, walking into a restaurant where there's a lot of clinging and clanking and banging and dishes and conversations and whatever else, yeah, not a fun time. Fluorescent lights or bright lights. Flashing lights could give you headaches. Um... Clothing can become uncomfortable. Something that you used to wear uh, all the time uh, can now feel restricting or irrit irritating. Um, large gatherings of people. Right? So, there's many things that, you know, could impact you. Now, what is the result of the overstimulation? Could be pain, could be fatigue, um, could be dizziness, could be headaches, right? Um... It's hard to say. Right? Things that did not bother you before the stroke, now just ruin a day. Yesterday I went to my support group. Um, I believe, I can't prove this, I believe it was because people were sitting all around me and I had to maintain focus in multiple directions simultaneously. In addition to fluorescent lighting, right? That's what I think I, I was done, right? I had plans for the day and unfortunately they got scuppered, right? There, there's literally nothing I can do about it. Now, 
Now, first off, we're going to discuss some basic coping strategies. And again, I'm going to list the articles that I found online uh, about this. All right. One, avoid the things that are going to set off your brain. Um, avoid crowds. Avoid chaotic places um, where you're going to have too much stimulation, um, like shopping malls. Uh, do your shopping early in the day and early in the week. Uh, avoid holiday weekends, holiday Mondays. Um, yeah, Christmas in a mall is... Pfft. Yeah, no. Uh, shop in smaller locations, quieter stores. Um, if you need to go out to a restaurant, try to eat at off-peak times. Uh, we've discussed this before. Ask people to speak one at a time um, and explain that You'd really like to hear what everyone has to say, but you can only hear one person at a time. So if you, you know, you're in a work-based environment, you have to go to a meeting, you may have to explain to people, hey, listen, I can only deal with one person talking at a time, so please uh, avoid the crosstalk. Um, if you have to be in a car and you're not the driver, sleep in the car during trips. Uh, now, you may want to consider sunglasses, hat, and earplugs, right? So fluorescent lights may be dealt with a hat because the brim will cover over this part and a pair of sunglasses to uh, minimize the, the impact of the fluorescent lights. Um, right, that might be a thing. Earplugs, right? Uh, if you have to go to the mall and, and you have an issue with uh, being too much things to hear, uh, earplugs. Me, what I do is I have a uh, set of headphones. I put in my mobile phone, my mobile phone, and I uh, turn on a, a YouTube vi a video that's or CBC radio or something, and just listen to that. And it, it drowns it out, right? Um, now then, <clears throat> if you have to be in a room at a meeting, um, if possible, sit a close to the door so you can make an exit quickly if you need to. Uh, B. Um, try to sit near the back so you can minimize the sound. Okay. Now, you need to monitor yourself when you're out and about, right? Because as you go out, unfortunately, we can't avoid things like music, right? That, that ambient music that every store seems to have. Uh, stores will have it in the store, and then the mall itself will have it in the mall. And then you also can't avoid the lighting in one store to the next. So if you're already kind of stressed and fatigued, you might be a little bit more sensitive to light and noise. So in that case, don't go to the house if you already know you're a bit fatigued. And if you do have to go to the house, keep it short, simple, right? Get what you need to get, get in, get out, get it over with, and try to avoid the stores that are going to make your day worse. Um... Take the cues from your body. I appreciate, and I'm guilty of this myself, you're going to want to try to fight through it. You know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to make it happen. i got to get used to this. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't. Right? So if you need to take a break, call your own foul. Right? Hey, you know what? I can't do this. I need to do the following. Right? I need to go home. I need to go sit down. Uh, whatever. Um... For those of you that smoke or drink, uh, well, you've had a stroke, what are you smoking for? Um, and if you drink to excess, what are you doing that for? That probably help you with your first stroke. What are you working on your second and third? Like, let's be serious here, right? So you may want to avoid things like um, uh, things that will impair your physical function, right? So if you have vertigo, right? like I get at times, try limiting your salt intake and your alcohol intake because definitely, you know, vertigo plus alcohol equals floor, right? Um, you might want to consider some strengthening exercises that you're going to help work with your physio physical therapist with. I have a word about my physical therapist at the end of this video, so please stay to the end so I can berate my physical therapist, right? <clears throat> if you're starting to get stressed or anxious, you know, try to do something that incorporates another scent, uh, sense. So, you know, carry little candies, right? Um, 
little peppermints or Werther's or Reasons or whatever, right? Um, put on some music that works for you. Um, this one I don't know about. Apply some deep pressure. Give yourself a hug. No, okay. Now, you're going to want to do things that are going to experiment with your senses, right? And that could be, you know, yoga, dance, swimming, art, aromatherapy, Pilates, you know, things that will see where your sensitivities start and stop. Where are those boundaries? And then you're going to want to challenge yourself, right? Um, and that's what I'm attempting to do. I try to get to the mall uh, in Barrie, Ontario, because it has a larger, more active mall at least once a week, and I hang out for four or five hours, right? Now, let's say you're sensitive to sounds. Right? You're going to want to limit situations. You're going to want to limit the exposure to situations, like stores, sporting events, movie theaters. Um, I haven't had a problem with that. Um, school activities, if your kids have school activities, um, don't, don't plan in specific timelines. I'll be there for seven hours. Uh, I doubt it, right? Uh, I'll be there for as long as it takes, right? Uh, yes, I will come to the event. I cannot guarantee how long I'm going to stay. Right? I will be there as long as I'm able to be, right? Because if you put a time limit and your body can't handle it, you're going to start pissing people off. Like, well, you don't want to be here. It's not that I don't want to, it's I can't. And there's where you're going to need friends and family to understand and be supportive. Ooh, S for support. That'll be today's letter, S for support. Right? Um, you might need to use headphones for TV and music. Either you're going to wear them to block other people out, or you're going to have to ask other people to wear them while they're, I need to do a thing, you want to watch your movie, please wear headphones while you watch your movie, right? Um, you're going to need to minimize distractions. Um, now, you may be set off by a bag of crisps or chips. So you may have to you go and pour them into a bowl, right? Um, you may try adding background noise like a fan, um, a white noise machine, soothing music, whale songs, you know, um, engineers clearing a minefield, whatever the case may be. Uh, you, now, you may need to remove yourself from that situation or event, right? You may need to go to a quiet place. That could be the hallway, it could be a bathroom, whatever the case may be. Uh, now, depending on how stressing that noise becomes will depend on how much help you're going to need. Is this like, I need to go take a nap, slow deep breaths, close my eyes, try like an ice pack, right? And... With a bit of work, and you gradually expose yourself to different sounds and louder noises, you should be able to increase your tolerances. Right? Now, if you're sensitive to light, avoid bright light and fluorescent lights. Yeah, that's not that realistic. Everywhere has fluorescent lights. Use sunglasses or a cap with a brim even indoors. Try yellow tinted glasses if fluorescent lights are a problem. Try polarized sunglasses if driving and with glare. Try yellow tinted glasses for driving at night. Uh, make sure you're getting pro a lot of vitamin A. That's vitamin A, but not too much vitamin A. Eat orange colored fruits, like your vegetables, like carrots, sweet potatoes, squash, and cantaloupe. Um, and, you know, you might need to take a, a break. Now, taste, taste, touch, and smell. This would be a difficult one, right? If your sense of taste, touch, and smell is altered, right? One, if your sense of smell is dr drastically impaired, you need to ensure that you have functioning smoke, CO2, and gas detectors in your home. I say again, if your sense of smell is drastically impaired, you need to ensure that you have CO2, CO, and gas detectors that are functioning and regularly inspected in your home. Now, you're going to have to t t try things out, because now if your sense of taste is impaired, um, everything might taste like cardboard, 
right? Or MREs. Um, you might try rubbing different textures on your arms um, to see what you are sensitive to or not sensitive to. You may want to add texture, um, you know, uh, to different foods. Uh, the article in here suggests uh, adding ice cream with nuts. So you may want to pay attention to sell, smells and how do different aromas make you feel, right? So now another hypersensitivity, cognitive work, right? Brain work, we all have to do it. Depending on your job, it depends on how much brain work you have to do. Unfortunately, my job is a lot of brain work. I use computers, multiple screens, various things where I have to do brain work. So you're going to want to plan your brain work when it's quiet. <laughs> sure. Attention, everyone. Attention, everyone. Shut up. I have to work now. Nope, nope. No noise. Yeah. That's not re that realistic, let's be honest. However, you're going to try to eliminate as many distractions and as interruptions as possible. Okay? You may need to screen out distractions by using earplugs, headphones, uh, play soothing music, uh, fan, white noise machine, right? Uh, turn down the volume on your phone and or let the machine get it. Work in an uncluttered workspace. Uh, use a three-sided table screen, right? That's kind of the cubicles we use at the cube farm at work. Um, now, if you're at home um, and you have other people in the house, again, headphones. If they need to watch TV or listen to the radio or whatnot, you may need to say, hey, dude, you got to put in your headphones. Right? Um, try to do any of your thinking work uh, when people aren't there. Right? So if you have children, when they're at school or at nap time. Um, And with a lot of brain heavy work, do not try to just push through it. I'll just, I'll just cram it through and I'll get it done. Um, you, you're going to want to take a rest break right? every 15, 20 minutes. It, it, maybe more often than that, initially, you're going to need to take a break. Um, right? And eventually you'll be able to uh, work through it. Right? Uh, you may need a metronome. Just for that constant. And if you have aphasia, a metronome can help as well. Right? Please see your speech and language pathologist to inquire about aphasia and a metronome. Right? Works for some, not for all. Right? Um, now then, the goal is to get away from taking breaks every 15, 20 minutes to stretch those breaks out longer. And eventually, you should be able to increase your tolerance and your abilities. Right? Um, now, another thing you may need to do because of your sensory problems, get your vision checked, get your hearing checked, right? You want to make sure that because of your stroke, um, any visual problems you're having uh, is not an actual eye issue. Uh, any hearing issues you're having is not an actual hearing issues, something structurally, physically is wrong with your eyes or your ears. Um, if your prescription has changed, even slightly, uh, at least for eyeglasses, that can cause some problems. I've had that, right? Uh, I think I have that. I don't know yet. I'm still going to go get my that checked out. Um, so, some people, right, after a stroke, may be hypersensitive to light, may have problems with depth perception, can't track a word, double vision. Um, you may have vision problems off in the peripheries. Uh, now, if you're, now, my balance has been impaired at times. I don't think it's due to vision, but I'm going to try to rule that out. I think it's because of the type of stroke I had. Right? And also... If your vision is impaired, that might exacerbate that sense of overstimulation. Now then, one thing you don't want to do, right, is eliminate any one sense completely or almost in its entirety. 
So I'm going to never hear the noise when I go out in the world. I'm always going to wear earplugs or headphones and I'm going to listen to something. That is, you know, a nightmare. Because when you finally take the headphones off, off or the earplugs out, right, you're going to get overwhelmed by an orchestra, a cacophony of noise. And that's not something you want to have happen. Um, you want to gradually expose yourself to whatever your brain doesn't like. So if it's certain smells, certain tastes, the way certain clothing or fabric feels, right, uh, or sound or light, you're going to want to slowly build up that tolerance. Well, I'm going to go to the mall. My goal is three hours, but I'm going to tap out as soon as it's too much. It might be 20 minutes, right? You might last an hour, right? However, once you get to that point where your body and your brain are like, nope, we're done, you are done. You are not going to continue that because you're just going to make your day worse. Been there, done that. Could be you don't like the feeling of wool, right? And you used to wear like wool socks or wool sweaters all the time. You might put on that wool garment and it feels like your skin's on fire or, uh, or they're sandpapery or whatever the case may be. Um, at that point, you might have to wear wool for 10 minutes and then take it off. Right? You're not allergic to the wool. It's just that sensation uh, of the wool on your body, right? Um, and then you're gonna wear you're gonna wear your socks for 10 minutes every two hours, and then you're gonna work up your tolerance, right? Unless it's corduroy, no one looks good in corduroy. The 70s are over, right? I'm just, if it's corduroy, just throw it out, burn it, get rid of it. The 70s are over. No one wears corduroy, right? And then be patient. Right? And this is the problem I'm having. Because um, in order for me to go back to work, I have to be able to work in a noisy, fluorescent lit environment. Bit of a shit show for me because I need to go back. No, I want to go back to work. I need to go back to work. So I can't really go back to work with fluorescent lights and noise. Or I'll be the guy doing a bad Roy Orbison impersonation with a baseball cap on. And I hate baseball caps, so I'll wear whatever hat I want. Because I fucking hate baseball caps. Um, and at that point, work through your sensitivity by working up your tolerance to the environments or things that you don't like. And over time, your sensitivity should decrease. And then lastly... Engage your clinical team, engage, engage your neurologist, engage your physical therapist, engage your occupational therapist, right? Um, and, or even your uh, psychotherapist, right? Social worker, whatever. Um, see if they know of a therapist with a background in sensory integration, right? See if they know of either activities you can do or a specific therapist that can assist you with sensory integration that helps with sensory sensitivities, right? And it's not uncommon. You are not alone. This is not a suffer in silence deal, right? And the great thing is you now may be a bit more hyper aware and hyper vigilant about your surroundings, right? Which will help you be more observant. And because of that, things might get better easier. Ultimately, whatever is going to work for you is going to work for you. And I'm not going to say you have to do yoga or you have to do Pilates or you have to do aromatherapy or you have to fill in the blank. Whatever works for you works for you. Just please keep in mind the uh, hypersensitivity uh, to, sense or, or to, to stimuli or um, sensory overload after a stroke. Um, it's a thing, but with a bit of patience, a little bit of time, some really good judgment and some horrible experiences leading up to better experiences, it is something that can be overcome. Um, and it's something I'm learning to deal with myself and I'm glad I found out yesterday that, you know, over, uh, being overstimulated, uh, due to a stroke, it's a thing. So Quick word to my physiotherapist, you are a terrific human being, and I thank you, you are a wonderful lady, you did not have to listen to what I've been telling you, this whole patient-centered therapy stuff, 
you got to be you got to stop being good at your job because we did color drills today. Stop watching my channel. Stop. You're not supposed to watch. You're not supposed to listen to what I say. Right? We did color drills with the beanbags today, um, and it was fun. But anyways, thank you to my physiotherapist. You know who you are. Right? Anyways, so if you have to like what you've been watching over the past going on th into the third month, uh, please like, share, subscribe, comment, share with your friends. If you happen to know someone that's either currently on their own stroke recovery journey uh, or someone that's supporting someone on their stroke recovery journey, please share this channel, like, share, subscribe with them, get them to get some information that even, you know, I wasn't aware was a, was a thing. And I've been researching stroke or post-stroke a lot. Um, and if you happen to notice either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being facial droop, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, inability to smile equally effectively or at all, slurred, stuttering speech, uh, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, general body weakness, weakness on one side, or inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.